skydiving. This is amazing. Yeah, but you know what else is amazing? An iPhone 6S for just 49 bucks at Metro. Really? Imagine streaming all the way down with that amazing camera. I'm switching. That's smart. You know what else is smart? Parachutes. Woo! Switch to Metro and get an amazing iPhone 6S for only 49 bucks. Metro by T-Mobile. Phone offer requires port in of number not currently active on T-Mobile Network or active on Metro in past 90 days. See store for details and terms and conditions. Hey guys, Justin Shank here, host of the top-ranked podcast, The Growth Now Movement. I currently rank in the top 15% in the world, and I want to help you do that as well. So I've created an online course and a mastermind that you can join for free for 30 days. All you have to do is go to launchfixgrow.com and sign up today. I'll see you there. Welcome to Life Transformation Radio. This show is all about life transformations and our journey from where we were to why we are doing what we are doing today. We will discuss the hiccups, the roller coasters, and the blood, sweat, and tears that has been poured out while discovering our purpose. It is all about our transformation. Here is your host, Sean Douglas. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Life Transformation Radio. This is episode number 201. We just reached 200 episodes. I want to thank you, the listeners, the amazing guests that we've had on the show, for supporting us through 200 episodes. I am your host, Master Resilience Implementer, TEDx Speaker, Business Positioning Strategist, and Author, Sean Douglas. This show was currently heard in over 66 countries, such as the United States, Sweden, New Zealand, Australia, India, China, all across Europe. So I want to thank you to those who are listening from around the world. Life Transformation Radio is all about our transformation. Here is where we tell the stories of why we're doing what we're doing. We highlight that transformational moment that has changed our lives and how we use this to then transform others and elevate their lives as well. You can listen to us live right here on Blog Talk Radio Network at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Tuesday through Friday. Join our Facebook community, Life Transformation Radio Community. So today is a very, very special episode that I'm bringing to you with the amazing Sharon Lynn Wyeth. I hope that you subscribe, rate, and review this show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, TuneIn, Player FM, Radio Public, Overcast, CastBox, the Google Play Music app, wherever you're comfortable listening to podcasts. On this show, I bring on such guests as Sharon that are entrepreneurs, speakers, business owners, coaches, podcasters, authors, amazing people who are impacting the world around them. And my guest today does that. If you have any questions for any guests that I bring on the show during our live broadcast, you can call us up at 657-383-1109. Again, the number, 657-383-1109. Please help me welcome to the show my guest, Sharon Lynn Wyeth. What's going on today? Ah, it's so nice to join you, Sean. This is such a pleasure. This is going to be amazing. We met at New Media Summit, and you literally blew people's minds away. Everybody was like, wait, say that again? And it was like, like you stole the show, and I love what you have going on. And literally, how you've taken a little bit of science and have transformed it into something so exciting and so scientific that people are like, I, I, I just, I can't not like no more. So, so I, I, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, it's my pleasure, Sean. You know what, too, just a few weeks ago, a university just came out with this big study that they had done on names and said that you can even determine how someone should look and what they look like by the name. Isn't that amazing? Wow, just by the name. Just That's by the name. So now, I have some of those. Like, crazy. there's names like Monica and Heather, you know, that are, that are good-looking people. So there's – I found yeah. some of those. But their research 
that really went through and gave pictures of people and said, what do you think their name is? And people were able to guess accurately based on their looks. So that means we're huh. associating names with what people look like even. It's just, it's so crazy because, I mean, it's literally luck of the draw. Like, I mean, I don't know what I was going to name. I have four kids. I have no idea what we were going to name them. Not even a clue. We have months spending time picking names and, and I just, that's so amazing that once you get the name, that's the type of person that they would be. It, it, that's so crazy. Well, when there were still only seven religions on the planet, they all agreed on a few things. And one of the things, <laughs> according to Dr. Eugene Whitworth's work, is that the incoming soul impresses on the one that's going to name them what they're going to be called. So that means we name ourselves. Now, there's two sciences out there. There's Sherry Edwards, who was scientist of the year in 2001 for her bioacoustics mm-hmm. research on sound. And then there's the somatics, which is other research on sound. And it literally says that whatever sounds we identify with, whichever sounds we accept, you know, and that we say that's what we want, literally it changes our vibration because we are all vibration. And so we will start resonating to that same vibration of that sound. And what sound, Sean, do we identify with the most? But the sound of our name. Because if I say, yep. who are you? You'd answer with your name as if that says it all. Now, of course it does if you know nemology science. But so either you're going from science or from religious, you know, when they, where the overlap is in the religions, everybody agrees. We are our names. Wow. And even, even now when you explain it, I just, cause I remember as, I mean, my daughter's four, my other daughter's one. I mean, we agonized over this name. Like, it was like, this is going to be permanent, you know, like I don't, like, what do we name them? You know? So, wow. That, that, that's completely incredible. Let, let's learn a little bit more about you and how this is all began. So the title of the episode is Namology Science with Sharon Lynn Wyeth, international name expert. She is the founder and creator of Namology Science, the study of the placement of the letters in a name. After 15 years of research, followed by three years of testing in over 70 countries, she has evaluated thousands of names since 1995. Her best-selling book, Know the Name, Know the Person, is the first in the sequence, followed by Know the Name, Know the Spirit, and Know the Name, Know How to Connect. You may have seen her on Good Day LA, New York City's Fox News, Good Morning Arizona, and in various other cities on NBC, CBS, and ABC, or have heard her interviewed on any one of hundreds of radio shows. Today, she is hired by human resource departments in choosing appropriate candidates to interview lawyers on how to present cases to judges and individuals who wish to know themselves better and maximize their ability to connect with others. She also assists national and internationally in naming new businesses, new products, and when people wish to change their names. Sharon combines nemology, science, and her intuition to give exacting, accurate readings to individuals, assisting them to get answers on topics such as love, career, money, relationships, and other aspects of life. She is trusted by her international clientele to guide them by providing discerning, perceptive, and insightful suggestions as her vast experiences and wisdom come through her readings. If you want to know more about what she does, go to www.knowthename.com and then go to www.bestnamemeanings.com. Bestnamemeanings.com. So, Sharon, the first question that I really have for you is, Why? Why nameology? Why do you do what you do? What is your deep, deep why? You know, I was a school teacher when this started, and I started seeing the patterns and names because of my kids and when I was starting to do seating charts at the beginning of the year. And then my brain started acting as if I already knew the kids. And so I realized that all I had was their names. 
So it's a long story, but it took 15 years to develop altogether, and then it got tested in over 70 countries um, for three years and in 49 of our 50 states. Wow. And the reason I spent so long developing it was I got to see so many things as a school teacher. We had 150 students a day, and then I was teaching college classes at night. So I was really working with 300 people every year. And, you know, it is so rare in our world today, sadly to say, that kids are coming from happy two-parent homes. It is just really, really rare. Now, sometimes it's an unhappy two-parent home. Sometimes it's a happy one-parent or an unhappy one-parent. But what we put our kids through today and the stress and the pressures and we keep downloading like more and more information younger and younger, okay? And oh, yeah. since I teach math, that's everybody's frustration point almost, you know, except I can see in their name. It's <laughs> good at it or they're natural. But I look at it and I think p- kids come in with anxiety. Kids come in terrified. And my favorite age group, even though I've taught every grade, third grade through a four-year college, over my 40 years in education, my favorite age group was middle school. And, and what I started noticing yeah. was these kids, you know, are just uncomfortable with each other. Or they get together in groups hoping that this group won't mind being mean to that group because together as a group they'll be safe. You know, and it's, it's just terrifying for some of the things I've seen in school. Mm-hmm. And so I thought if I could wow. figure out the names and who they were in the names, then I could work faster to create a safe environment. Because my goal at the beginning of every school year was, how quickly can I create a safe environment classroom? Because until I do, nobody's going to learn. They're going to be worried about their safety. And I have taught in gang schools. I have taught in so many different kinds of schools. And so that became a real concern of mine. And, And over time, I could see the patterns in the names. And it was like, you can you can create, because I have them working in groups a lot, you can create a safe group where that child feels safe. And then every month, for me, the first day of every month, the kids learn that, hey, you're getting a new group. And what I did during the year is I put them with, you know, their next least favorite and then the next least favorite. And in February, because it was the shortest month, I gave them the ones I knew would be the hardest for them to get along with. And if they weren't succeeding very well, I'd say, it's okay, guys, if you have a hard time learning how to get along with each other, we can do this again in March. And they'd all go, no, we're going to figure it out. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but, um, but being able to see the, the patterns and the combinations in names really helped get there. So the good news is by the end of each school year, all of my kids got along with all of my kids. They had to learn how to get along. And I think that's so important along with learning math. Okay, so, but that's what drove me is because I've worked with so many people throughout the years, and I saw that if you can understand somebody from who they really are instead of who you think they are or who they're portraying Mm -hmm. to be, because a lot of people will put on a face or a happy smile when inside, you know, it's really tough. And if you can see them for who they really are, they relax faster, they trust you faster, and they actually learn faster but how much better a life they can have. If you can meet somebody, the minute they say their name, you can say, oh, I know who I'm talking to at the deepest level, and then you know how to address them. And you can come from compassion because we all have challenges and we all have gifts. And that's what drives That's amazing. Wow. So knowing the full story, I... I'm even more in, incredibly in awe of you because you took something that the kids were dealing with and solved the problem or at least attempted to, and it sounded like you did, you like, look, we need to figure this out. We can't wait anymore. We have got to figure this out. That's amazing. Well, and the and kids loved do. it. I bet the kids were better for it too. Well, what's really interesting is there was rarely any bullying in my room. And by the end of the year, even the bullies weren't bullies because they didn't need to be. Because most bullies as kids are being bullied at home. Okay? Mm. So you, we teach skills, you know, and how to get along. And I would teach little tidbits of this, you know, as we would go along. I'd say, you know, how many people think they're like this? And they'd raise their hand and go, what do they all have in common? It's the same type we think we do in numbers, 
Like all the composite numbers, what do they have in common? All the prime numbers, what do they have in common? Well, look at all these names. Mm-hmm. What do they have in common? <laughs> wow. Know? It's like it's like no difference. Yeah. It's, it's observation and it's patterns. And math is simply patterns, teaching patterns, and that's what numerology science is. You know. Now, in your name, Got which it. is very interesting, okay. Sean, is it says in your name that you're wanting to make the world a better place. You know, it says you have a very it, good memory. <laughs> you know, in my in but, my name. Yeah, it it literally says you want to make the world a better place. I definitely 100 percent do. And you said I have a great yep. memory. It I have, says a you have a good memory. memory. Oh, you have this memory that you may not think yeah. it's there, but the minute you need something, it pops in. It's like, wait a minute, oh, it's on its way, guys. You know? Yep. And then nope. it's there. 100%. And then yep. <laughs> the funniest thing in your name, funniest thing, is that when you're learning something new, because you like to learn, it's important. You know? And when you're learning something new, you want the teacher right to the right of you. It's like, I don't have any patience to wait for an answer once I don't understand something. So I'm doing something and I don't understand. Teacher, you better tell me right here, right now. You better be there. But the minute yep. you've caught on to the foundation and you think you've got it, it's like, go away, leave me alone. You're sitting too close. Go help somebody else. Thank you very much. <laughs> that sounds about right. Like I was in high school the whole time. Like, hey, what about this? Got it. Okay. 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 Got it. Go away. Yep. Wow. So is it just, you know, is it just a way, like, like if there's another person that's – because there's more than one Sean Douglas in, in, in the world. Is it just what – is that what that name means for for every single person named Sean Douglas? Or is it the way that like my middle name or – I mean is it is, – I mean what if I change my name? What if I decide I want to be Sean Michael Douglas no more? What if I want to be Steve – I don't know, Scooter Balls or something? Like do I – like? I mean, do I still retain originally what my name meant, or or how okay. does that work? So the birth name is your blueprint for this world. It literally tells you what seven reasons you came, what you wanted to learn in this lifetime, and how to go about them to complete them and become successful. And then it says even what timing, when are you going to be focused on what? It gives you your primary purpose in life and why you're here. That's in the birth name. So any other name uh, you go by literally says, how I am now attempting to solve those problems, you know, that are in my birth name. For an example, in the birth name, I'm just making something up. It could say that, hey, i got to get from L.A. to New York. <laughs> okay, that's one of my goals. Yeah. And in the birth name, it says you're going to hitchhike. Well, after a while, you're hitchhiking, you're going, you know, I'm not getting here very fast. And this is kind of miserable, <laughs> whatever. And so you may change a name or change an aspect of your name, or focus a little differently, look at it differently, and then all of a sudden, instead of hitchhiking, you're on a bus. And then you can mm-hmm. change again and say, hey, better than a bus is a train. And then you might change something else and go, hey, better than a train is a plane. <laughs> you know, but the <laughs> whole goal is it doesn't matter how you get there because Got by it. nicknames, you're changing how you're going. You know, if you're answering to how somebody calls you differently, you know, you're changing how you're traveling. But the whole goal is you still got to get from L.A. to New York. Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't really matter how you do that. But whatever current name you're going by will show us how you're going about the things that are laid out oh. in the first name that you're supposed to do. Got it. Okay. First name's the purpose, so, and the vehicle of how you'll live out that purpose is in every other name. You got it. And the other thing that's got cool it. is that in an in-depth reading, I always mm-hmm. ask for the parents' birth names. You know, not your mom's married name, but your mom's birth name, your dad's birth name. Because let's say you have the exact same name as somebody else. Are you going to be exactly the same? Now, the first name is the essence of who you are. Your middle name is where you go under stress. And your last name says, who are you bringing to you? Who are you attracting to you? What kind of people? So in other words, who's Uh, influencing you, okay, or who are you listening to? But even if those were all exactly the same as somebody else, you're still not the same. Why? Because you had different parents. And that's why what we do is we look at the parent names. We compare the parent names to your names. We see the influence. We see what you got from them that if you hadn't had them, you wouldn't be like, okay, and how they right. influenced you, supported you in some respects, and tried, tried to tweak you in other respects to change. And where you had to fight to hold on to who you were because that part was not being supported, Okay. And so we do that right. in a half-hour reading, 
and we tell you your seven reasons that you're here and how to go about solving them. And that's a half-hour reading. And then if you want to compare your names to others or get more answers, I mean, there's so many questions you could ask, and the answer sits there in your name, then you're adding on time to make it an hour or an hour and a half reading. Wow. That is incredible. I'm, like, blown away right now. Like, the more we get into it, I'm like, this is, like, this is so, I don't know, this is, like, so cool to me. I don't know. It's like waking up at Christmas morning. You're like, this is so cool. Like, I feel like I've just, I, I, I feel like I just got led into the cool kid club. Like, I, like I literally, <laughs> I so like I literally got an invitation. <laughs> like, you know, this is so but, cool. The really cool part about it is, if you know how to read a name, you know how to talk with and connect with any other person that's out there. There's no strangers because all you have to do is look at the placement of the letters in the name. And the really cool part is it's easy to learn. And it's so easy to learn, and I think it's so important to connect with each other because how good our connections are and how good our relationships are with each other determines the quality of our life. And because of that, Sean, I've got, through Valentine's Day, my third book free, the e-book version, if you just go to the website. And there's a button to push on every page but the front page. And you can get that Amazing. free book. We're, okay, so the listeners right now, through Valentine's Day, for free, you can go, where are we going? How are we getting it? Let's do it. <laughs> you go to knowthename.com. And, you know, the first page is so crowded with, look at all these TV shows. Look at the latest, you know, interview on Coast to Coast. Look at all this stuff. Um Anyway, you get past that page, go to any other page. It's in the right-hand column, very top of the right-hand column. There's a little button that says, get your free ebook here. That's how easy it is. Perfect. I am so getting that book. And what, what, what does the book entail? Does it tell us what you know and kind of how to do this and kind of how to practice it? What, what does the book tell us? I go straight to the point. Okay, there is so much absolute directness in my name. It's like there's no skinny dipping around. There's no BSing in there. It's like, okay, we're starting, you know, just like a, a, such a school teacher. There's, we've got this much time. Let's go. Right. No waste of time, guys. And so I, the first vowel in the first name, yours being an E, mine being an A, okay, that first vowel says how we communicate and how we connect with others. There's only six vowels. I literally take 100 pages to say this is all you know just from that one letter and that one position. You know how to maintain a long-term relationship and what's needed to keep it going so it doesn't go dead or stale or boring. It says how to connect, how to ask your first questions if you want to meet somebody. The minute they know their name, you know how to start a conversation. It literally says how you learn, what type of learning, what kind of relationships you're used to. Are you passive-aggressive? Are you dependent? Are you whatever? It all says it in that name. There's so, what kind of gifts wow. you like. The only thing I didn't include in that book is what kind of sex you like, even though that is in your name. You know, but that's the only thing <laughs> I didn't include because it's sitting in that same letter also. So I always uh, say from the bedroom to the boardroom, boy, your name says it all. <laughs> oh, my God. That's even more cooler. Oh, my God. You must be a riot at, like, parties and stuff. You know, or like when you're at like your job, like you're at the HR place, you know, and like, like in the HR office, like, all right, what are we doing? Because I remember when I first met you, you're like, without even meeting a person by their name, I can tell if they're prime for that job, if they're ready for that job, if they'll do well in that job, or maybe they need to be put into another position without even yeah. meeting that person. I'm like, there's, there's, there's no way. That's, that's, that's right. incredible. That's right. That's what HR people do. Every day I'm getting, I work with a bunch of HR firms, always have room for more, and they send me an email and they go, here's the job description, right? Here's the title and the job description. Here's the names of the applicants. Okay, go, you know? And some of them I go, hey, this is a really good guy, but this is applying for the wrong job. Let him know he'd be better off over doing this, you know? And then I say, here's your number one and here's your number two. Now, I was tested over a six-year, six-year, six-month, time period by a company that had been given a name reading, bless his his wife, who heard on a radio show or teleseminar or something and decided to give his her husband a gift of a half an hour with me. And in that half an hour he said, Okay, 
I want to know, right, if you can do this. And I said, I absolutely can. So he says, what's your six-month, you know, contract, whatever. So once a week, he would not give me any name ahead of time. And I said, then you're paying for my thinking time. Don't you want to give it to me ahead of time? No, I want to make sure you can't look it up on the Internet or cheat or whatever. Not a problem. Oh, your money, God. your time, you know. So anyway, <laughs> so he would give me the list of the names and the job description. Later I go, okay, here's your number one, here's your number two. And he never gave feedback. And he'd go, okay, here again. And depending on the complication of the job or the complication of the names, how long it takes me. But the longest it would ever take me is 20 minutes. That's rare. It usually takes me about 15. And I go, here it is, right? So never wow. feedback. He'd call me the next week. And I get through three or four positions in an hour. Then on the four-and-a-half-month mark, he said to me, I gave him the thing, and I thought, okay, I'm ready for the next one. And he says, okay, wait, we got to stop on this. And I said, okay, what's up? And he says, for four-and-a-half months now, in 15 to 20 minutes, you have given me number one and number two. And it has matched my HR department who has read all the resumes, who has interviewed all the people, who has called all the resources, and all that expense and all that time, and in 15 or 20 minutes, you're hitting it one and two every time, right on. And he says, but today, our number one and two is your number two and one. Why, they're, why are they reversed? And so I said, well, this was, they're close. You'd probably be happy with either one, but here's the determining factor that I use. And he goes, you know what? Nobody, if we called for a reference, would give that kind of information and we wouldn't even find out that or figure that out for six months to a year when he had the job. And he yep. says, and you've been so accurate, we're going to go with you instead of us. And that was five years ago, almost six years ago now, and they still write me every time they're doing management and they're a huge company. I mean, all their managers, I've met them, I've gone out twice, keynote speaker, taught them stuff. And it was really interesting because when I went out to teach the managers just what's in how to connect books, and I went out there to do it. And then they wanted to know certain people they were working with, certain clients or big companies, right, that they had deals with. And they said, this is the person we're working for. What do we need to know to connect or to get them to buy, right? And I, I look at the name for a minute and I go, okay, this is how you go about this one. And the people are going, how does she do that? She wasn't in those meetings with us. <laughs> <laughs> but the cool this is almost dangerous, right? You can learn this. Everybody can learn this. It's the coolest thing. It's not because I've got special powers or I can twitch my nose like the witch or, you know, I've got a magic wand like in Harry Potter. Everybody can learn it. That's the coolest part. This is, this is like almost dangerous. Like if I was, you know, the CEO of a Fortune 500 or Fortune 100 company, I wanted to do a merger of some kind or negotiate whatever. I'm like, who's the guy I'm talking to? Let me look his name up. You know, and then, like, you have an advantage, like a crazy good you. advantage and know how to talk to them, how to connect with them, how to sweet talk, you know, whatever. Like, ooh, that's dangerous. Well, Even in relationships, you know I bet. even more dangerous is one of my people, and he is a genius, this owner of this company, absolute genius man, and just a sweetheart, okay? And so he said, I want to do business with this other company because they have this piece that we're missing. You know, so I want to do business with this company, and this is the man I'm going to be working with. What do you think? And I looked at the name, and I said, he's just honest around money. He's going to skim money off the top. At the end of one year, he'd skim $600,000. What, the guy didn't believe and you? So, well, he did, but he thought because he knew ahead of time he could stop it. Hello? <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know? no. And so anyway, the good news is the man's such a genius himself. He figured it out because he knew what to look for, right? This took him yeah. a while. Yep. And he figured it out. And how? And then he said, okay, how do I get out of business with this guy? And I said, hey, this is the only thing this man's interested in, and I, I don't know if that's going to help you. I really didn't. I thought, oh, you know, I don't, I don't know enough about your business, how to work with that. I can only tell you about the personality. And so mm -hmm. um, he came up with that information, and it helped him decide what he was going to do. And the, the long, good story is, that because of him knowing, he caught it, they went with the new information, and they figured stuff out, and they ended up buying him out and buying his company, and so, therefore, they got their money back. Heck, yeah. And that guy's out of Heck a job. Heck, yeah. Yeah. 
but it was because of the genius of that man. I can only tell you how the personalities work, you know, but he made it a right. great offer and business deal and whatnot. But I just thought, don't you wow. want to know those kind of things ahead of time? Me, I would have said, no, yeah, he schemes money. I'm not trusting him. I'm not going into business with him. I think I'll figure out another way, right. <laughs> you know. But anyway, right. it's cool. It, it, I mean. Oh, I, 100%. 100%. And, and another thing I keep thinking about is is there's so many personality tests available. You have the DISC, Myers-Briggs, Four Lenses. Uh, VIA Institute has something called the Character Strength Survey. It's the Values in Action Survey. There's but so Sean, many. Each of those surveys, each of those. Every single one of them, Myers Briggs, my systems and then compared to human design to all of it. One, mine's easier. And two, I don't <laughs> need somebody else's input. You know, if I was going to take one of those personality tests, I'm smart enough to say, mm-hmm, this is the right answer, even though it's not me. Mm-hmm, this is what they're looking for, even though it's not me. I can uh, take one of those tests and skew it. You know, and we all have it. our own biases, oh, wow. and we see ourselves a certain way. That's how we're answering those questions, because it's based on our taking that test honestly. Right? And seeing ourselves clearly. Yeah. This one? Yep. Hey, I don't even need your input. I don't need you around. I just need to know how to you spell your name. <laughs> and it's awesome. unbiased. It is. Because you can't skew the letters in a name. Right. And think about how long it takes for them to even take that survey. This, oh, my gosh. You can figure out for 15, 20 minutes. Oh, look, it's right there. It's short. Oh, it's my gosh. It's fast. It's simple. You know, you just have to so learn amazing. a few rules. You know, and then because at first people go, oh, my gosh, there's so much to, to, to memorize. And I go, hello, in my first book, I know there's a lot to memorize. I give you the whole system, how you can determine somebody's personality. I don't drag it out. I slap it to you right there. It's all there, very logical, very deductive, my teaching style. You know, the whole thing is in there. It reads yep. like a reader's digest. Or it reads also like the Inquirer because I had to give juicy details all the way through, you know, to keep it in your mind. But then I have a whole <laughs> chapter that says, here's your mnemonic devices. For an example, ready? People whose uh-huh. names start with a C are charming and charismatic to cover their need to be in charge and in control. A bunch of Cs. So they come across wonderfully, but they're control people. <laughs> yeah. You know, they want to be in wow. charge. Oh. They're actually very good in charge. You know, the company benefits when they're in charge. They're a little bit hard sometimes on other people that work for them, but the company benefits. Now, if you want the company to benefit and you want somebody in charge, it's easy on the people that work for them, or at least very productive and everybody benefits, then get a K to uh-huh. leave instead of the C. Huh. You know, but they're great leaders. Now, if you look at CEs, CEOs across the country, there is, a, there is so many Toms that are on top and oh, very right. top. But if you look at yeah. the list of people in jail, there's so many Toms in jail. And that name has two out of the three letters are all or nothing, and we're going to really do what we want to do, and we're always going to do more. You know, we're competitive. We've got to be on top, right? And if we can't be on the top, we're going to be on the bottom. So you look at it, two-thirds of that name says that, and that's what you see. You see all these people on the top. If you see them in the middle, they're on their way to the top. And if not, they're on the bottom because they went – I'm not doing that. You can't make me. <laughs> and then they end up in jail. I, I mean, it's crazy. That's so amazing. You know, it has nothing there. to do with age, right? It has nothing to do with age. It has nothing to do with gender. It has nothing to do with, okay. I mean, it's just, there, right? The new- there's age. It, it shows you in age. It kind of does with age because it shows you, and we only figure it out if we're doing a long session with somebody because there's so much other information we yeah. get first. But it literally, oh, yeah. we can figure out in a name. This year, the focus says on this. This year, you're supposed to focus on this. This year, you're supposed to focus on this. I gotcha. I did this for cool. a, for an HR person who owned a company, okay? And she had she had had me do names enough times that she said, okay, I'm taking the course. And I said, why don't we you just sponsor it? We'll do it in your office, right? We'll get a few other people in there because it's more interesting. You know, we'll open it up to that city. Yep. And we went through. And then I said, okay, give me your husband's name. And I said, I'm going to show you guys how to do this age thing. And I put her husband's name on the board, and I said, okay. Ed. And I said, I don't know your husband's history, right? Do we all agree on that? I have no idea, <laughs> right? When he did what, when he made what decisions, we all got that, right? And I said, now watch. And I showed him the process that I've been teaching him. 
And I said, so watch how you read it. And I said, this is when he probably fell in love at this age. This is when he probably graduated from college at this age. This is when he got his first promotion at this age. This is when he changed jobs at this age. This is, and I went all the way through it. And she says, and when she got all done, she goes, oh, my God, that was exactly right all the way through. <laughs> and I said, it's That's in amazing. the name. And you can compare two names, Sean, and you can see how well they're going to get along and where the bumps are going to be and whose responsibility it is to clear the bump or to learn the other one's style or what right. the problem is and what the solution is going to be. Now, you want to hear something really cool? Oh, 100%. I have, I have HR people calling me and they say, their first year, you know, year review is coming up, or their eighth year review is coming up, or their whatever, their yearly review is coming up. You know, what should I tell them? And inside, I'm laughing. I'm going, you worked with them the whole year. You don't know what you need to tell them. <laughs> I'm just laughing inside. And I go, okay. So, you know, or maybe I think, you know, sometimes they say, how do I tell them? Now, that's fun, you know, because some people don't listen very well, and how, do you, how are you going to present it so they can hear what you need to say? Okay, and I love doing those. But anyway, I get a lot of these. And so what I do is I look at the seven lessons that that person came to learn. Mm -hmm. And then I say, how would those lessons fit into this job that they're doing? Well, whatever those seven lessons are that fit into this job, how would they show up in that job? Then I say, talk to them on these things. Because that way it's a win-win. They get better for the company, right? They're working on what they came to work on and learn anyway. So it's helping them personally, and it's helping the company. And that's how I determined to do that. That's amazing. I, wanna, I, I have to get your book because I want to I wanna do my kids' names and, like, see where, like, because I have, I have older kids, like, 15 and 12, and I got a 4-year-old and a 1-year-old, and, uh, and we almost lost the 1-year-old twice before she was even born. And uh, and I loved like I, I always told my wife I was like she like I don't know what but she is gonna rule the world like I don't know what she's gonna do I don't know what what's she's your, gonna create. What's, what's your first name? What's your first name? Her first name is em- is Emerson E M M Y R S O N. First of all, good luck getting her to do something she doesn't want to do. No her kidding. Challenge, <laughs> her. her and I love it that your kids are four and one. My grandkids are four and one. Okay. Oh, nice. When I'm looking at Emerson's name, first of all, she's going to have a spot on memory. She's going to be very good in math, mechanics, music, computers, anything that takes a step-by-step process and deductive reasoning. She's got a detective in there. She'd be a really good detective, a really good lawyer. Um, but And she's a truth person. Man, don't you lie to her. She's going to let you know she doesn't like that. You know, don't you leave out any details so she goes away with the wrong impression. She'll come back and nail you for it. And you got to be careful because she's, she's rebellious. She doesn't want to be told what to do. You need to ask her. Don't tell her. Okay? You can make suggestions. If not, she's not going to listen to you. But the other uh-huh. thing is she's a seeker. She's a seeker. She wants to know how this world works. Now, she's not going to get there for a while. Okay? Uh-huh. She'll probably get there around 21 to 23 years old. Now, I, I'm doing a guesstimate because I can't, I don't have enough time yeah. to do, the, the years take more right. time. But that's what it looks like approximately. Okay? But uh, how are you going to motivate her when she doesn't want to do what she doesn't want to do? Right? You're going to look yeah. at her and you're going to say, you want to be the smartest person on the block? Because you know that brains get money and money gets friends. Right? That's what you're going to tell her because that's what she's going to be yeah. interested in. And you say, honey, you have to learn this and you will be the smartest one on the block. <laughs> I love it. You know what's, okay, you what's, know what's great about that? What? You know what's great about that is that I'm telling you, she is an immovable object. At one year old, and she's she's uh, almost 17 months. She's walking. She's, but when she gets fixated on something, you can't tell her nothing. Like, hey, come here. And she'll run away from you. But she'll run away from you like, like, like a baby runs away from you. She's like, no. Like she gets she like she like stares at you and she's like ah, and like screams, and then she starts walking away. I'm like, come here, and then and she digs her heels in too. She'll grab a hold of something. She'll she'll want mom and she won't let it go, or she'll want me and mom will try to take her. She won't let go. She is stubborn. 
<laughs> she is stubborn. It's, it's not already. stubborn. It's not stubborn. She doesn't have stubbornness in her name. It is. It has nothing to do with stubbornness. It is. I want what I want. It's called focus. I want what I want. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. She wants what it's she focused. wants. Hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. It's not stubborn um, because stubborn people get in their own way. She's not getting in her way. She's just really focused. But I'll tell you something else. You're going to want to send her away to college, or else she's going to leave anyway. She's going to decide that you guys have too much influence on her, and she needs to get away from home. Got it in her name. She, I call it the prodigal son. Okay? Uh-huh. You know, in the story of the prodigal son, he leaves, and he goes traveling, and he does all these different things. Yep. And then he finally mm-hmm. comes home, and the parents celebrate. Yep. Right? Woo, finally yep. home and yep. whatever. And, of course, the one that stayed home the whole time says, <laughs> how come he's getting all the attention? But anyway, the person, the prodigal son had to leave to figure out who he really was and what was important. Okay? Yep. She's got that in her name. She's going to do the same thing. So, oh, and boy. able to satisfy that so that you stay connected to her when she's going to want to leave, right? You either give her two weeks to a uh-huh. month at summer camp, depending on her age as she gets older, right? And you let her leave. Mm-hmm. Right, or you give her a way to college because that way she's leaving, but you're still connected. Because if right. she doesn't have those opportunities to be on her own, to be away from home but in a safe environment, she'll do it when she's older, and you guys are going to sit there and you know chomp on your nails until you figure mm-hmm. out what she's doing and before she wants to come back. Okay, what's your four year old? Oh my name? gosh, uh, my four year old's name is Mackenzie. M A K E N Z I E. We didn't want the little C in there. M A K E N Z I E. Got it. Her biggest lesson is how non, how not to be manipulated by other people. Okay? She's uh-huh. got a generous heart. She's got a lot of empathy for yeah. everybody else. She's very independent, you know, and very yep. much oh, my yeah. way or the highway, and I'm not going to listen if I don't like what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yep. <laughs> you know? So, so she's she's got leadership. She's got incredible leadership in her name. And when she leads, everybody's going to benefit. I don't worry about her. Um, you know what? She could be a forensic scientist with her name. Wow. Yeah, she's going to have that kind of smart. Now, she's going to have a little wow. wild streak. She's going to want to ride motorcycles and that kind of stuff, so you got to satisfy oh, that some safe way. <laughs> yep. Okay. We got the kids okay. a, a scooter, electric scooter, for, for, for Christmas. And uh-huh. she's like, I want it, I want it. She wants to be all over it. She wants to be all over the electric scooter. And so I have my 11 year old like sit with her because if not, then she'll try to take it out on her own. I'm like, no, you're not gonna fall. And like, yeah. So she's already like that. She's already showing you like that, yeah. So find safe she's ways. Like, go fast. Or you give her good helmets, good knee pads. You know. Yep. Yep. Because <laughs> you're not yep. gonna she's stop her. Em. Okay. So anyway, those are examples of of. You know, how fast awesome. you can look at a kid in her name and go, oh, look. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh. I love it. I absolutely love it. I it, I have some things in in mind, planning, whatever, for this year to host an event because I speak everywhere. And so I'm in talks right now. I, I, I have to find a way to, to, to get you out to this event. I don't know if you do any keynote speaking or anything like that, but I think that more people need to hear this. And, and I definitely do I do keynote right. speaking. You know, perfect. So far, mostly yep. overseas. Isn't that amazing? Amazing. You should do TEDx. Like you should be um, all over TEDx. It, it's really interesting. I had an invitation to do a TEDx one time. I mean, they just heard about me and they gave me an invitation to do TEDx. And I'm going to tell you, I looked at that and I thought, I got the jitters. And I thought, I'm not ready. And I really wasn't. You know, now I can go stand up in front of anybody because I just look at them like a classroom. But at that time, I was like, oh, my gosh. So now I'm ready. So now the invitations need to come in. (laughs) But I wasn't then. And and I think think we hurt ourselves when we jump on something before we're ready, even though it sounds wonderful. Yeah. Right. You know, and on the other hand, we've got to push through anything that's blocking us or getting in our way when we are, you know, ready, even though it may be a little, you know, um, stressful at first. Okay. That right. we've got to push through. But when we know we're not ready, we've got to not do it because what did they say? You only have one time to make the first impression? 
Yep. You know, and so I, I wasn't ready at the time the opportunity came. I mean, I am now, so we'll see. Well, and I'm so going to start I've nominating said, you for some TEDx talks. Great. It's going to happen. I'd appreciate it, Sean. I'd appreciate it because <laughs> now I'm ready. You know, and now I love sharing this. I love going around the room and going around the room and looking at the different names and then looking at somebody going, you are such trouble. <laughs> you know? And, of course, everybody else, they know each other in the room. I don't, you know. <laughs> and then they get the point of the, oh, my God, she's so right about you. Right? Like, that's got to be the best part. <laughs> well, what's really fun, I was doing this um, fundraiser uh, for a high school up in Washington. And the kids lined up, and they donated $5. And for that $5, they got an index card that they could put their name on. Okay? And so, and it was marked, so I would know. And so the kids came up in their groups of their friends, and I would do a quickie on everybody. It was like, what one thing can I say to each person that could give them meaning or be helpful, you know? And so Mm -hmm. this one group of boys came up, and, and I was saying the one thing to each one, which is really nice. And this one kid looks at me and goes, that's not me. I'm not like that. And the other five kids turn around and go, yes, you are. And they all went to give him examples. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, that is the joy. Because people can be in denial, but this system has been so tested in so many different places. I just look at them and go, yeah, how long do you want to live in denial? That's it. That's you. You know? But anyway, it was so cute when all the other boys were going, oh, oh hello. Oh, yes, you are. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay, so tell us again, for those just joining us, where can we get the book? The the free ebook is on knowthename.com, and just go to any page other than the home page, and it'll be a button on the right-hand side at the top. It's free until Valentine's Day. And if you wait till Valentine's Day, it's going to cost you fourteen ninety five. Okay, and then um, – there's a ton of – your interview will be up there soon, too, but there's just a ton of, of information that's there on the website. And I love you can it. order the book, so it's I'll, easy. Perfect. So as we start to close the show, I want to give you an opportunity to address the audience and tell them what, what you want them to do and what you want them to know. I want them to know – how they operate, okay, because what they need, all right? And it just one tool will help them. It would be really nice, okay, even if you just have one tool. So I'm going to give you one tool. If that first vowel of that person's first name is an O, an A, or a Y, it's not the first letter. It's the first vowel as you're reading from left to right, okay? Yep. So the only previous knowledge you need is that you need to be able to distinguish a vowel from a consonant. Okay, the vowels are A, E, I, O, Q, and and Y. Okay, so if the first vowel is an O, an A, or a Y, all right, when you address that person, don't bother saying how are you because that person in their mind is saying you've already wasted my time. Get to the point. Don't bother. Get to the point. That's what they want to know. Okay? You know, I always think about telemarketers. Come on, telemarketers. If you know the vowels, don't say that. They already want to hang up on you. Okay. Now, if that first vowel is an I, an E, or a U, like with your name, with Sean, it's an E, okay, you're going to start off by saying, hey, how are you? How's the family? Everything going well? You know, how's the day going? You're going to connect. And you're going to connect for a good five or ten minutes if you have time, right? You know, that you're not starting a radio show or something else. But you're going to connect first. And then you're going to get to business. Mm-hmm. Because if you go straight to business, you guys are going to say, wow, didn't even bother to connect with me. We're not very important in your book, are we? And you don't want to engage. There you go. So if it's an I, an E, or a U, start with how are you, connect. Give them the 10 minutes, you know. Give them a conversation back and forth. See who they are and if they're okay. But if they're an A, an O, or a Y, start with business. Get the business over with, and then they want to connect. So they're just reversed. Business first, connect second, A, A, O, and Y, and the reverse of that for the other vowels. you got to connect first. It would be maybe. great at a networking event. Like when you go to a networking event and you're like, oh, Jason. Hey, it's Jason. All right, let's get down to business. You know, like, you got you know, it. And then you meet you got it. like How another, like, you? Like, if you meet, like if you meet Jeff, you're like, Jeff, how's the family? How's it going? Love it. Yeah. Okay, now let's, you know. 
Okay, I got gotcha. you. Huh. Exactly. I'm trying it. But with that, Jason, I'm gonna you're going to start with, Jason, what do you do? How can I help you? What do you do? Right? Write down a business. Yep. You're right. I'm, you know, and with the rest of it, them. That's, that's so amazing because when I'm at events, I don't want people just to – just to be like, hey, how can I help you? How can I be like, dude, I don't even know you. Like, I I need to talk to you for a little bit. Like, I didn't, you've been saying this, you know, for the for the past couple of minutes, and I'm thinking, I'm like, every time I'm at an event, I want to talk to people. Like, I don't want to be pitched. I don't want to be like all up in my business and like literally my business. You know what I mean? Um, you know, I, I'm a marketer. I'm a graphic designer. Like, you know, I want to talk to you first. So that's so interesting. And I didn't. I just thought that's who I was. Like I, live, I like connections, and I love, you know I want to talk to people. And so, it's kind of like the love languages. I've been, I've been kind of using the way that I want to be loved with people instead of loving them the way. That, so it's kind of the same thing There's where I've been talking to people languages. the way that I want to be talked to. There's six different lo- love languages. One's an A, one's an <laughs> one's an E, one's an I, one's an O, one's right. a U, one's a Y, and they are all in that right. book on how to connect. It literally says this yeah. is this person's love language. This is what you have to do for this person to feel love. And so if you're showing love like you want to receive love, you're only hitting your own vowels. Yep. You're not yep. hitting the other yep. vowels. But it's in the book. It literally says this is what you do. And everybody's favorite part so far that's written to me about the book is they go, we like the summary at the end because it makes sense once you've read the book. And then you don't have to go back and try to dig through the book to find that information. It's all summarized at the end in a nice little chart. Oh, uh, very cool. I'm getting this book because, oh, it's going to be dangerous. It is It is going to be dangerous. I'm so you know, pumped. I think you. I it's think you have the most fun. amazing skill. It is. You know, it just, well, any, it's so, anybody can it do this, so John. Anybody can have this amazing skill. You know, I mean, I happen to create it, but anybody can do it. I mean, the people that come yep. take classes with me in the seminars, they're going out and they're doing it. You know, they're oh, making amazing. money at it, too, if they want to make money at it. If not, they're doing it because of their business. That's awesome. But I've got some really successful people out there that have done this, you know, that take the class. And the, and the cool part yeah. with that is when you take a class from me, you get a year of follow-up. You're not just, okay, wow. thank you, ham bam, thank you, man, have right. to go. No, yeah. you get a, a, a year of monthly training and follow-up where you can have questions. Because my goal is, hey, you invest in taking this class means you want to learn it. And so I want to make sure you're learning it right so that it works for you. You know? Huh. Got it. Wow, this I, this is by far one of my favorite episodes that I have done on my show. I've learned a ton. I'm so pumped to get the book, to dig in and see how I can better serve people by their names. Right, and, and this book is easy. It's I'm, six I'm letters, one position. <laughs> You're not even learning the yeah. whole system yet. It's six letters, one position. But the coolest part is, Sean, in the first book, there's the mnemonic devices. How am I going to remember all this information? And, and every letter in the positions has a mnemonic device. And, in fact, I just got through giving a Know the Name, Know the Spirit seminar, which is on the second book, it, and it, people just went home today. And they said, oh, my God, you break out in song, you break out in rhymes, you break out in, you know, little diagrams. <laughs> you know, you're making sure we're getting this. And I thought, yeah, 40 years in education, let me tell you, I know how to teach it to you fast. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, but anyway, one Amazing. of the ladies came in on the second day, one of the ladies came in and she goes, you know, I'm singing that song, that humming, that rhyme. <laughs> she goes, I couldn't sleep. My head wouldn't shut up. <laughs> and I said, that's a nice problem to have. That's awesome. You know, oh my gosh. That's cute. Yeah, I'm going to dig in more about you and your story and uh yeah, w- w- when I when I get this event um either later this year or beginning of next year, you're going to be my first phone call and uh I I got to have you come out and I got to have you um you know, speak about this cuz th- I I am I'm fascinated. I'm completely fascinated by this and yeah. and even and the more that I talk to you the more I become hooked on what you're doing incredible you know well 
I appreciate your enthusiasm, Sean. It's just, you know, you're smart, so you can see the value because it has oh, value. Yeah. And the value is oh, yeah. going to improve your relationship. I don't care who you are. I don't care which letters yep. you have in your name. It literally, the system, the entire system says, look, at this is how you can improve. And, in fact, I have so many people after they, you know, I can talk to them, right, about who they are and about what's troubling them and what the answers are in their name. And they, so many people go, will you be my new BFF, please? <laughs> you get me better than my mother. You get me better than the, you know, and I think we can all do this. You know, right. it's out there. It's not a secret. So, and that's the cool part. Yep. And, and I love the part, Sean. Human design, I think, is an incredible, amazing system that they came up with human design. Oh, it is a yeah. most complicated thing. It is so complicated, and you have to know so much about the person first. Where were you born? What date were you yep. born? What time were you born? You know, yep. <laughs> whatever. I mean, you have to know. You have to ask questions. And the people that have taken human design and have then come to my system go, oh, my God, we're getting all the same information, and we just need the birth name. And it's easy. Yep. And it's fast to learn. The first class is yep. 15 hours, and you can go out and give a one-hour reading after 15 hours with me. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I believe in doing it and doing it right. You know, we don't have oh, time 100%. to wait. Of course, okay, right. I'm a That's first in your name. Let's do business. <laughs> <laughs> right. Perfect. You know? Well, Sharon, thank you so, so very much for being an amazing guest. You definitely are incredible, and your craft that you created, I, I'm just in awe. I'm inspired. I love what we've talked about here today, I'm going to get your book. Everybody listening right now needs to go and get the book at no, K N O W, no, the name.com. Get the free ebook because the show's live. Everybody from now until from, from right now, February 11th until Valentine's day is going to get that book for free on her website. No, the name.com. Jerome, I appreciate you. You've been an amazing guest and I look forward to, to connecting with you throughout the rest of this year. Thank you so much for your time. Ah, my pleasure, Sean. It was a joy because, of course, I read your name first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Perfect. Life Transformation Radio listeners, an amazing guest impacting the world around her by simply understanding your name. Go to know the name. Dot com and go to bestnamemeanings.com. Connect with Sharon. Take her class. Get her books. Know how to connect with people just by knowing the name. As we close, I want you to subscribe, rate, and review Life Transformation Radio wherever you're comfortable listening to podcasts. Also, as I close, I want you to live your brand. Find opportunities every day to live out the core values that you hold deep in your heart. I call this living your brand. So until next episode, live a great life. Skydiving. This is amazing. Yeah, but you know what else is amazing? An iPhone 6S for just 49 bucks at Metro. Really? Imagine streaming all the way down with that amazing camera. I'm switching. That's smart. You know what else is smart? Parachutes. Woo! Switch to Metro and get an amazing iPhone 6S for only 49 bucks. Metro by T-Mobile. Phone offer requires port in of number not currently active on T-Mobile network or active on Metro in past 90 days. See store for details and terms and conditions. Skydiving. This is amazing. Yeah, but you know what else is amazing? An iPhone 6S for just 49 bucks at Metro. Really? Imagine streaming all the way down with that amazing camera. I'm switching. That's smart. You know what else is smart? Parachutes. Woo! Switch to Metro and get an amazing iPhone 6S for only 49 bucks. Metro by T-Mobile. Phone offer requires port in of number not currently active on T-Mobile network or active on Metro in past 90 days. See store for details and terms and conditions.